now uh, we are com coming to the sharing session. There are three sharing session in today's webinar. They are first, advanced in web scene. Second, updates on treatment modality. <clears throat> Sorry, modality. First, post pandemic new MacTech tech technology. In each session, two to four speakers will share a presentation about the topic relate. Each speaker will have 20 minutes to share. There is no Q&A session in this webinar. 接下來我們將會進入我們研討會的主要環節。今次研討會我們將會分為三個部分。第一個部分我們的主題是疫苗的發展。幾位專家會幫大家講一些比較新的疫苗的資訊。而第二個部分就是一些新的治療方式。最後一個部分就是疫後的新醫療技術 now, come to the sharing section first, at once in web scene. May I invite the first speaker, Dr. Go Yun Jin, Medical Affairs Director of Sinovic Biotech Limited, Limited, to share his topic on last update on pediatric data for coronavirus. Uh, well, okay. Uh, thank you uh, for your introduction and also for this opportunity to share or uh, to update uh, clinical evidence from Sinovac. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is just a, a graph uh, to show that Sinovac, I mean, we focus on research and development of vaccine for all medical needs since 2001. This means we almost have uh, more than 20 years of, uh, 20 years of uh, experience to develop infectious disease uh, vaccines. And we are always on the front line of fighting infectious disease. If you take a look at that uh, picture, uh, in fact, in 2004, uh, 2003, when SARS coronavirus outbreak uh, in mainland China, we are starting to develop SARS vaccine. And also in uh, 2008, uh, we developed vaccine against H, uh, HN, uh, uh, H5N1, this uh, called, called pandemic influenza. And in, 20, in 2009, we developed H1N1 influenza A vaccine. Uh, and in 2016, we developed uh, EV71 vaccine, uh, which against hand, foot, mouth disease outbreak in mainland China and also some Asia region. And now uh, we developed a coronavirus, a COVID-19 vaccine uh, in 2020. So it's not a success or product uh, in one night, is a result of a continuous effort of 20 years. So we are uh, not uh, success in one day, but it's an effort of 20 years. Now, this is a, a graph just to show the situation now, just as the previous speakers mentioned that we, we are still in the fifth wave of the pandemic. And now uh, we can clear, we can see that uh, there is an increase a trend among West, uh, Western Pacific. Uh, and also we know that uh, we now have more cases and even deaths reported from this area and, and, and most are from uh, Hong Kong. So this is a, a overall uh, picture around the world. And also we, if we take further, we can see that uh, even in the world, there are many uh, VOCs or variant of concern of uh, uh, South Korea too around the world. Now, most of them are, are uh, Omicron. 
So uh, we always ask this question, how about the performance of the current vaccines uh, to uh, prevent the disease caused by VOC, especially for Omicron? So today I will share some evidence to show that Coronavac can uh, play an important role on this wall against a pandemic, especially uh, when we're talking about the Omicron. So this is a, a surveillance data occur from United States uh, CDC. So it's clear, it's clearly uh, shows that uh, children and also adolescents can get uh, infected and can get sick. Uh, and also uh, here, if we take a further, uh, we can see that so even uh, for this group, uh, children and adolescents, the incidence is more is here is higher than the incidence uh, for the elderly people. So this means uh, the children or adolescents uh, who get infected by uh, by the virus can be uh, a source of transmission in the community. So uh, it, it's also an important issue that we should prevent. Uh, the virus from uh, to uh, to to ensure or to protect to protect our children and adolescents. So when we're talking about this uh, topic, so Coronavac uh, have a lot of evidence to support their the effectiveness of the, of, of this uh, uh, to against uh, those uh, virus. First, uh, this uh, result this is the result from phase one phase two to show that Coronavac is very safe among um, children and adolescents. So this uh, RCT trial is done in mainland China, Hebei province. Totally, we have more than 500 volunteers uh, enrolled this study uh, between October 31st to uh, 2020 to December 30. So the result tell us that overall incidence of adverse reaction was about 20 to 30 percent, which is very common when we develop new vaccines. Uh, and in the phase one uh, study of phase one, phase two study, and most of the adverse reaction are grade one, grade two. So except for some uh, for injection site pain, no significant difference between the three groups. I mean. Uh, middle dosage, high dosage, and the placebo groups. And the most common reaction were injection, uh, side pain, and our fever. So the results show that different dosages and also uh, immunization schedule are safe among um, children and adolescents between three years to 17 years. And most important, no serious uh, adverse reaction were reported or identified during this study. And also because we are following this study, so volunteers so far we didn't find no uh, serious adverse reaction. And also from the study, uh, we uh, folks, uh, we also uh, start, we started the human uh, response, as we call the immune response. And more than 96% um, of children uh, in this study uh, who received two doses of coronavirus. So they developed uh, antibody against South, South uh, Korean S2. And the GMT of the uh, middle dosage group uh, was significantly higher than the lower dosage. That's why finally, uh, at the last, we choose the uh, uh, middle dosage group. Uh, and also, uh, the chronic was very tolerant and safe uh, in an induced uh, humoral response in children and adolescents uh, among three to 17 years. So this uh, overall uh, data from phase one, phase two study is a RCT study um, and developed and supervised by the China FDA. Uh, it's, uh, the quality of the study or the evidence standards is, is very high. And also uh, we have other study to show that the persistence of immune for, uh, for this group is long. So this study, uh, totally, we have 180 um, volunteers. So uh, the study and the immunization schedule or the interval between the first dose and second dose is about four weeks. Uh, if we take the uh, look at the right graph, so the, the above one shows that the zero, uh, zero positive rate 
uh, is about uh, is still about uh, eighty six percent after uh, almost uh, six months uh, after the first dose. It's, it's a little high, and also for the uh, GMT, if uh, after six, six months after first dose, it's still more than uh, thirty and uh, thirty. So um, this uh, data tell us uh, even after uh, six months, all uh, uh, all the procedures can last six months. So it always is also shows that for kernel like. It's for once in a while we've been talking about the uh, position of immunizations among uh, children and adolescents between three and four and 17 years old. So uh, this uh, uh, data from uh, from immunogenicity is immunological study to support that uh, kernel like can uh, the immune uh, the immune response or immunity protection of kernel like uh, can last at least uh, half a year if we uh, do they study in, if we're talking about the position resistance in, in a well-designed study? And how about the real-world performance of kernel like among the children ready to 20 years? First, let's take, a, take a, a look at the real-world study in Chile, because Chile have established a well-developed uh, information system just means they can uh, collect all uh, health information uh, for their citizens. For example, they can collect the uh, health status and also they have uh, the record of all uh, vaccination. Just means they have, uh, uh, they have a very uh, good uh, you know, a study uh, basis for us to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, uh, all have uh, vaccines in Chile. And this uh, is a study uh, published in New England Journal of Medicine. Basically, um, it describes that two dose or kernel like among adult can um, give a very good uh, protection to against uh, SARS CoV 2. Here is the result that for the overall effectiveness, to, uh, it's about 65%. For uh, hospitalization, is about uh, eighty-seven. For ICU admission, is about is about ninety percent. For uh, deaths, it's about is more than eighty-six percent. So this is a study uh, among adults, but the result is published by New England Journal of Medicine. That means the quality of data source is good, and the method of this study is accepted by the uh, uh, world class, I mean, the top class uh, researchers around the world. So uh, basically use the same database and the same method. The researchers in Chile, they uh, did an additional analysis focused on children and adolescents. So this is a result shows that uh, kernel like can uh, effectively print the disease uh, caused by the variant. So this is just to use the same database, but focus on children. And there are about 2 million children and thousands in this database. So the, the researchers just focus on this part uh, of the uh, population and compare the people who are vaccinated with kernel -like to those who are kernel -like and also unvaccinated and to compare the incidence be between these two uh, groups. And the study found that the vaccine uh, effectiveness for children and between six to si uh, 16 years uh, is, 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 uh, uh, with a, a protection uh, effectiveness uh, to against symptom infection about 74%. And with a effectiveness against hospitalization is about 90%. And for ICU admission is about uh, 93%. So we've been talking about these results. We, uh, all we found that during this study, the Delta variant 
is a dominant strain in Chile. So that means in when we see this, uh, when we do this uh, analysis, it's in fact tell us that chronic uh, performance very well when a dom when third variant uh, is is a uh, is is um, as a predominant variant of virus in Chile. So this is a, a first study of chronic uh, shows that in the real world shows that uh, it uh, did can uh, protect children from a third virus in the real world. So another uh, study that looks uh, a lower uh, uh, age uh, amount of children is from three to five years. So they also use the same uh, database, but focus on uh, children between three to five years. So uh, in this uh, analysis, it is also tell us that chronic can uh, protect or, or effective protect uh, children among uh, three to five years to against uh, against the for example, against uh, uh, COVID-19 infection, the effectiveness is about uh, 38%. For the hospitalization, the effectiveness is about uh, 64%. For ICU, uh, the, the effectiveness is about uh, 69%. So if compared with uh, other studies, or even, uh, I mean, the study just I mentioned before, among adolescents, it, it's a little lower. But uh, if we uh, compare another study just uh, republic published uh, in US uh, with some other type of vaccine, it's almost the same because uh, the, the other study uh, shows that the effectiveness to prevent, uh, uh, pre prevent uh, such chronic infection is about 31%. So if we compare 31 and 38, is almost similar. So uh, even we can see it's not higher as a result uh, among adults or even adolescents. It's just, it, it, it indeed tell us that chronic uh, performance well in children are between three to five years old. So uh, this is very important because it's a study in a real world not in a clinical trial or not in other some immunological analysis. This is a, a real evidence to show that chronic uh, can prevent South country infection uh, in the real world. And most importantly, because this study is done um, during the Omicron outbreak in Chile, it also tells us that or uh, it's also a real, real, real evidence to show that chronic can print South Korea uh, to infection during Omicron outbreak. So this is very important and also give, a lot, give us a lot of confidence that we can um, believe or we can impact that chronic can play an important role during our uh, fight uh, uh, during, uh, during our war against uh, Omicron pandemic. And also this is another uh, ongoing study to uh, give you more message that we are focused on efficacy. That's uh, the highest standard clinical trial in uh, to show that uh, the, uh, if, uh, the protection of chronic between children uh, means six children uh, between six months to seven years. It's a multi center international uh, clinical trial. It's ongoing. Uh, we, we have an uh, inter analysis focused on safety. Uh, it's based on a result of uh, uh, 6,000 volunteers. The preliminary result tells us that the overall incidence of this reaction was similar to the result I just mentioned from phase one, phase two clinical trial uh, in China. It also suggests good safety in healthy people and also in different races. 
uh, it's ongoing. We are expecting that in the next few months we can have this uh, efficacy. Uh, uh, study have the result of this efficacy. Study to show that uh, what how the coronavirus performance. Uh, but we have a lot of confidence. And also, uh, we have another uh, ongoing uh, safety study. It's a post marketing uh, surveillance that we uh, choose. Uh, we we choose several uh, province uh, is in, uh, in China mainland. Uh, we focus on the uh, surveillance uh, safety signal uh, if uh, out, I mean, just uh, uh, spent outside the clinical trial. It's not just uh, from clinical trial. It's, uh, we have a large scale, try to find or sign uh, any potential risk among children uh, between uh, six, uh, three to uh, 17 years old. So this is not a clinical trial. This is a safety surveillance uh, in the real world or after or post uh, marketing authorization. So uh, basically we have a, a, a three group of uh, volunteer of, uh, of uh, receivers. For example, the first is from three to five years, the second is six to 11 years, and the other group is uh, 12 to uh, 17 years old. So this is a, a study based on active surveillance. So we are still uh, we are still uh, uh, we, we are still conduct this uh, surveillance, and maybe uh, we are, we are also expect that in the next two months we will have the preliminary result. So this is a, a result based on uh, thirty uh, three thousand uh, participant or children. So it's. Uh, a uh, larger scale compared to clin uh, clinical trial. So we are very serious about uh, any risk or potential risk that may be related to Arnavik. So this is ongoing, just also to give you some messages that we are very uh, serious about uh, the adverse reaction among the children. And so far we have about uh, uh, 14 countries or regions has granted uh, uh, EUA or uh, a pro marketing of coronavirus for pediatric uh, pediatric population. For example, we have uh, China, Hong Kong, uh, Indonesia, Korea, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, uh, all listed here. Uh, you can see it also give us confidence that coronavirus is, is safe and uh, and uh, and have a lot an effectiveness and is accepted by the international community. Uh, it it did help the country to prevent some sort of virus to build a community uh, immunity, a community immunity to against uh, South Korea too. So, in a summary, uh, coronavirus is a well tolerated and safe in children, adolescents between three to seventy years old. So, this is data from phase one, phase two clinical trial, and it also uh, induced good. Uh, immunogenicity and has a good immunity, immunity persistence. And the study or reverse study also tell us that uh, in children between six to 17 years old, it can uh, effectively prevent a severe disease caused by a uh, dirt variant. And also uh, uh, another reverse study uh, support that chronic uh, in children between three to five years can effectively prevent the severe disease caused by uh, Omicron variant. Uh, and also uh, Sinovac are conducting more studies to uh, support the uh, safety and also the, the effectiveness use these products in children between three to 17 years old. Uh, as just mentioned, more and more countries are granted EUA or conditional approval uh, of coronavirus uh, in children between uh, three to 17 years old. And uh, the, in the world, the, the inactivated COVID-19 vaccine, I mean, coronavirus, can effectively prevent disease caused by uh, VOCs, variant of concerns, among children and adolescents.
Okay, this is what I want to share. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Go. Next, may I invite Dr. Percy J. M. H., co-founder and executive chairman of ImmunoCure, to share his topic on nurturing biotech in the Greater Bay Area, the Inomio Cure model. Dr. Zhang, please. In the next question, the Health and Health Center, Zhang Qi Dr. Yisheng MH, will share with us. Please, Zhang Qi Yisheng. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. 刘少华主席，多谢各位文医生、各位嘉宾讲者、各位朋友，大家好！好荣幸得到香港医疗学会同埋各主办单位邀请我参加今日嘅网上研讨会。我系郑其德，亦都系验尿 Q 啊，包踢医学生物嘅联合始创人同埋执行主席。今日嘅议题咧。我哋準備咗兩個題目，首先咧就由我講解一下有關培育一個生物科技企業嘅成長嘅模式。其實呢個模式咧，頭先響之前嘅講者 Dr. Grace Lau 嗰度咧，已經咧約略即係蘇過俾大家噶啦。然後咧，我哋就會邀請由我哋嘅首席科學顧問、香港大學愛滋病研究所始創所長。陳志偉教授向大家講解一下疫苗嘅研發課題。Next slide, please。我哋公司咧係聚焦喺粵港澳大灣區嘅。其實喺個大灣區裏邊咧，對於初創甚至係成熟嘅生物創科企業咧，係提供一個。良好嘅發展誒模式嘅，咁區內咧亦都具備咧比創科需要好多有利嘅條件。嗱，譬如好似有一百三十五年歷史嘅香港大醫藥院啦，其實香港大醫藥院好似係啱啱慶祝咗一百一十一週年嘅。咁除咗香港大醫藥院咧，其實咧仲有好多咧知名嘅學府，譬如科大、成大、中大啊、浸會大學啊，佢哋亦都培育咗大量嘅優秀科研人才。咁佢哋喺我哋嘅創科行業裏面咧，係不可缺少嘅重要資源嚟嘅。我哋做科研咧，除咗要大量嘅投入之外咧，其實仲需要政府咧有利嘅政策同埋資金嘅支持嘅。咁喺大灣區咧，我哋覺得咧就具備咗呢個條件啊。譬如從中央嘅政府嘅有利嘅政策啦，到到各個地方嘅落實嘅配套，包括香港同埋在內咧，都有好多全面嘅培育同埋激勵嘅計劃嘅。加上咁多年來咧，在基礎科學同埋科技嘅研發裏面咧，項目個落地咧，都已經逐漸發展成為一個科研基建，絕對係創科界嘅理想發展基地嚟嘅。與此同時咧，我哋做科研嘅時候咧，亦都需要大量嘅資金嘅。咁所以咧，就必須靠近一個。一流嘅資本市場提高我哋各種集資嘅機會。大灣區咧有眾多嘅風險投資、基金投資同埋企業嘅融資，所以香港係一個主要嘅國際金融中心。喺港交所同埋深交所掛牌咧，更可以成為咧國內外嘅投資者嘅參與。咁啊，提升佢哋投資嘅流動性，同埋提供佢哋一個適當嘅退出嘅機制嘅。咁喺創科實業裏邊咧，最終咧其實都係需要咧係市場嘅支撐嘅。祖國咧係有龐大嘅內需同埋出口嘅市場，所以咧我哋咧
覺得咧，提供一個樂觀嘅前景咧，生物科技咧選擇發展基地係非常之重要嘅。響大灣區嘅發展機遇咧，絕對係唔會低於北京嘅中關村、上海嘅將江園區同埋蘇州工業園區嘅。Next slide, please. 咁響 Immunocure 科學裏邊咧，我哋咧響二零一五年咧已經係始創於香港大學裏邊一啲科研人人員啦。我哋係面向粵港澳嘅大灣區，我哋嘅總部咧。實實在在咧，就設喺於香港科學園嘅，咁咧就負責科研嘅項目嘅，同埋咧，我哋喺北京同埋個深圳咧，亦都有分公司，就負責國內嘅發展業務嘅。我哋嘅科技嘅基礎咧，係主要源於香港大學全球獨家授權嘅科技平台。第一個咧，就係、是、個 PD One。base 嘅 DNA vaccine 嘅平台，咁呢個咧，我哋咧就已經係做緊嘅啦。咁咧，亦都喺不同嘅階段咧，開發咗四個疫苗。咁第二個咧，就係、是、NT Delta Forty Two PD One 嘅平台。喺呢個平台咧，我哋亦都發現咗咧，有幾個非常有潛質嘅。可治療癌症嘅抗體，誒、呃、或者我提一提啦，呢、這個 NT Delta Forty Two PD One 咧，其實呢個 NT Delta Forty Two 咧 PD One 咧，其實一個係個 ISO form of PD One 嚟嘅。咁佢同 PD One 咧嘅不同咧，就係、是、佢少咗十四個 amino acid。咁佢嘅 binding site 咧，就唔係喺個 PD L One 同埋 PD L Two 嗰度。佢就喺個 total receptor four 嗰度嘅，咁呢個咧，陣間咧，陳志偉咧，教授咧就會咧，可以咧同大家講下。咁咧，我哋亦都會咧叫陳志偉教授講下我哋 DNA 嘅疫苗嘅科學基礎同埋佢嘅發展方向。同其他嘅創科企業咧，我哋都係需要一個加嘅顧問團隊嘅。在科研上咧，我哋有艾滋病雞尾酒療法，似乎佢係哥倫大學嘅艾滋病研究所所長何大一教授。咁當然啦，就有我哋嘅首席顧問咧，就陳志偉教授啦。公共衞生方面同埋社會層面方面咧，我哋係有梁志榮醫生同埋高榮文醫生嘅指導嘅，佢哋嘅。保護意義咧，喺我哋嘅發展嘅歷程咧，係一定不可缺少嘅。當然啦，我哋更重要係需要有一個組織，充滿智慧同埋活力嘅研發執行團隊。Next slide, please。從二零一五年咧，發展到今日咧，我哋咧已經開發咗兩隻主要嘅疫苗。就係、是、我哋嘅新冠疫苗，新冠疫苗咧已經香港大學嘅 CTC 裏邊咧進入臨床一期啦，即係而家已經係做緊嘅啦，但係仲未完成。咁仲有咧，我哋嘅艾滋病研究嘅治療嘅疫苗咧，亦都好快會喺深圳、北京同埋上海咧進行臨床一期嘅。咁其實呢個咧係。发展进入成熟期嘅重大嘅里程碑嘅，大家可以参考下我哋嘅发展模式。其实主要系通过咧有效嘅协同效应，同埋咧策略性嘅合作伙伴而发展到今日嘅。首先咧，我哋咧就同香港大學艾滋病研究中心同埋深圳香港大學嘅深圳醫院共同咧深化咧。
科研呢個發展成果嘅。咁我哋咧喺個 delivery technology 裏面咧就有上海嘅塔瑞沙，同佢開發咧 electroporation 電導入嘅技術，去將嗰個 DNA 咧導入嗰個人體嘅細胞裏面。我哋亦都聯同咧，廣州藥業嘅拜迪生物咧，就開發咗個 GMB 嘅生產線同埋呢個工藝。當然啦，我哋亦都有香港大學臨牀試驗中心同埋深圳第三人民醫院執行我哋嘅臨牀試驗項目。最後呢，我哋咧因為不具備咧融資嘅。經驗，所以我哋喺早期咧就已經聘用咗 Opus 創富融資咧做我哋嘅融資顧問，去填補我哋呢方面嘅空白。Next slide, please。我哋嘅發展目標咧就係要成功持續咁做一個自主創新嘅生物科技企業。我哋咧就具備咗呢個原創嘅 DNA 嘅疫苗、抗體同埋製藥同埋生物嘅製品嘅生產科技同埋工藝，咁樣咧我哋只可以能夠咧更快速地成長，去應對新發生嘅傳染病同埋各種癌症同埋一啲免疫系統嘅炎症。當然啦，我哋希望咧，我哋提供嘅藥物咧係相對地便宜嘅，去造福呢個人類命運嘅共同體。或者我提一提咧，其實喺個 messaging RNA 嘅疫苗咧，喺個 cold chain 裏邊咧，佢係要負八十度去運送嘅。但係喺個 DNA 嘅疫苗咧，我哋通常都係喺二至八度就可以儲存㗎啦。我哋亦都咧有啲數據顯示咧，我哋喺個室温之下咧，我哋係比較穩定嘅。咁呢個咧都係我哋要更加多嘅數據去支持我哋啦。咁但係呢個方向咧，明顯咧 DNA 嘅疫苗咧，無論個生產嘅成本同埋嗰個處理咧，係會比 messenger RNA 更勝一步嘅。而呢個咧，亦都係會咧對於。一啲比較冇咁富裕嘅落後國家咧，可以提供一個方便嘅。咁以上呢啲咧，都係每個生物科技嘅初創企業咧，必須考慮咧嘅發展嘅途徑嘅。下一張 slide please。今日咧，好高興咧有呢個機會。同大家分享 Immunocure 醫克生物嘅企業理念，即係我哋嘅 DNA 啦。我哋咧會有一個咧 UP 嘅頻道嘅，同埋個網站嘅。如果大家需要更加多嘅資料咧，可以去我哋嘅 YouTube 嘅頻道同個網站咧去參考。跟住咧，我就會請我哋嘅首席科學顧問。香港大學愛滋病研究中心嘅始創所長陳志偉介紹，啊，深度講下我哋開發 DNA 嘅疫苗嘅科學基礎，希望對大家有一啲啟發。多謝各位，我而家就有請陳志偉教授發言啦。Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Zhu Weichen from University of Hong Kong. Uh, AIDS Institute. And uh, I want to thank the meeting organizer for giving me this wonderful opportunity to sharing our experience for research and development uh, using PD-1 based DNA vaccine against COVID-19. Uh, you already heard from uh, Percy about uh, the background of the immune cure. Uh, in recent years, we have been based in Hong Kong Science Park, and uh, the lead products, we already have two PD-1 based vaccine uh, entering or will be entering the human clinical trials. 
At the same time, we also build up antibody platform of technology, including the humanized, humanized antibody and also human single B cell cloning technology. And with that, we actually have one candidate antibody called the anti-Delta 42 PD-1 antibody being under development against cancer. At the same time, we also discover very broadly neutralization antibody against the COVID, uh, basically SARS-CoV-2 infection. So now, uh, now we already have candidate two very potent antibody against Omicron and actually against all the variants of concerns. So this is under development. At the same time, we're also doing research to discover viral entry inhibitors were derived from Chinese herb. It's a natural product and which show very broad uh, antiviral activity against the SARS, COVID-19 and influenza and even Ebola. So this one, we hope we can develop a new product uh, using as a nasal spray because a lot of vaccine induced neutralization antibody cannot reach the nasal, that's the site of the viral entry effectively. Therefore, developing entry inhibitor is one of the very useful way to prevent the viral transmission and stop the pandemic. So this is uh, uh, what I'm showing. We are developing a prototype will bring into the, uh, hopefully into the clinical use quickly. So talking about the core technology of platform is the PD-1 based vaccine. So this technology I'm showing here, the irregular shape of the cell is called the dendritic cell, which is the major antigen presenting cell. And the professor Russ Diamond uh, won Nobel prize in 2011 for his discovery of this type of the cell. And uh, based on Ralph Steinman's research, they use antibody to deliver antigen to dendritic cell. And in their study, they can promote the CD4 T cell response and promote the antibody production. But somehow there's no good T cell immunity induced. But uh, using our PD-1 targeting technology, not only we can induce antibody through the helper of CD4 T cell, we can actually engage the antigen cross presentation for inducing very potent CD8 T cell. And the people may know CD8 T cell is also called killer cells, which is the major immune cell to eliminate cancer and also to eliminate the virus infected cells. So this is a very unique uh, way to induce CD8 T cells. So using that currently, and actually Percy already talked a lot about the advantage of the PD-1 based vaccine. Uh, uh, one area I want to emphasize is the PD-1 based vaccine can be repeatedly used. So this is where will be very important as a booster vaccine for future clinical use against COVID-19. If we can induce a very long lasting uh, uh, and, and also very potent memory T cell responses which can confirm long-term protection, which so far the current vaccine, we do not see such advantage at the, the stage. So then uh, as I mentioned, the two vaccines, one is uh, developed for COVID for preventive use, and the other one is developed for HIV for immunotherapeutic cure use. So for the uh, COVID vaccine, we actually making the soluble PD-1 domain infusion with SARS-CoV-2 research binding domain as uh, uh, the vaccine design. So the receptor binding domain is the site of the virus, which will interact with the receptor on the host cells to enter the target cells. By inducing specific antibody and T cell immunity targeting in this area, we have a better chance for either prevention and also for therapeutic use. So this is the real data we generated in the mouse model. And currently we can see the PD-1 based vaccine, now we call the IC cough, which can induce a higher level of the neutralization antibody when we compare with the standard no PD-1 or the inactivated vaccine in parallel. And so far the neutralization antibody induced 
And many of the animals still have neutralization antibodies against all current uh, SARS-CoV-2 variant of concerns, including the Omicron. As so we can see here, inactive vaccine has a minimum effect for inducing such anti-Omicron antibody, but our PD-1 targeting vaccine uh, can, can do so. And the most importantly, the advantage is for inducing long-lasting T-cell immunity. And particularly in the animal studies, we show that the targeting vaccine through PD-1, we can induce very potent CD8 killer cells in the lungs of the animals before the viral challenge. And this advantage has not been found with the inactivated vaccine because the inactivated vaccine is not designed for inducing the long-lasting T-cell immunity for protection. So if this characteristic can be replicated in human studies, we hope our uh, PD-1-based vaccine will be very useful as a booster vaccine for long-term protection against COVID-19, against all the variants of concern because the variation for T-cell immune response so far is a still minimum, not like the immune escape for the neutralization antibody. And after that, we also did in vivo challenge to see whether the IC cough will induce any protection in vivo. So this is the uh, uh, transgenic mice expressing a human receptor ACE2, and they are very susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 uh, in infection. And using this model, we can see the vaccine-induced immunity and the protect the lung very well. This is a control animal. You see the inflammation and the damage in the lung. But in our IC cough immunized mice, the lung actually very much fully protected. And at the same time, a uh, majority of the animal, there's no live viruses in terms of infectious unit can be detected. And also at the same time, some of the viral load already can achieve about two logs. That is about 100 fold reduction and in this model. And then in a different model, we also see similar challenge uh, protective effect, suggesting the IC cough indeed can confirm protection in two different animal models in vivo. So with this uh, information and the data received, we started the human clinical trial at the Hong Kong U uh, Clinical Trial Center. And uh, so far, this trial is uh, still ongoing. Hopefully, in the near future, uh, I can share the, the, some of the immunogenicity data with you. But uh, so far, after the inoculation and the vaccine is well tolerated, there's no major side effects uh, being uh, re reported. And then, because the DNA vaccine has a very good advantage for adapt to the variant of concern. So we can design the vaccine and through the synthetic biology, we can generate a new type of vaccine very quickly. So, so far we already made this second generation uh, PD-1 based vaccine as a booster against the Omicron. And so you can, you can see through the parallel comparison, the inactivated vaccine cannot boost good neutralization antibodies against Omicron but our IC cough vaccine can do so. So suggesting the, the PD-1 based vaccine as a booster also has a high potential uh, for future clinical use. So that's all I want to share with you today and thank you for your attention. Thank you for the chance sharing. Thank you very much. Come to the last speaker of this session. May I invite Professor Yashihiro Chikamoto, Austrian Antibody Technology Inventor, President of Kyoto Path University, to share his topic on COVID-19. Professor Chikamoto, please. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, very clear. Okay, so, thank you very much. Uh, today, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to show my uh, research. Uh, we have developing ostrich antibody to various kinds of infe infectious diseases. Next slide. 
So as you know, uh, ostrich is the biggest and oldest avian species in the earth. And the height is uh, two meter or 50 centimeters. So, so big birds and uh, very fastest runner in the bipedal walking animals. And the top speed is, is 60 kilometers per hour. So life span is so long and uh, they cannot fly and uh, very, very uh, violently. Okay. So uh, as you as shown in this uh, X-ray video, uh, the ostrich is very, very violent. She is, and uh, my leg is broken by the kick. Very dangerous animal. So we have succeeded in developing uh, technology to mass producing high quality antibodies by immunizing ostriches with antigens. When an antigen is injected on female birds, an antibody is produced in the body and the antibody is transferred to the egg. The antibody is purified from the egg yolk. So we can uh, collect the only egg and separate the egg yolk and purify the antibody. So this is the summary of the ostrich antibody. So uh, ostrich antibody to various antigens can be created quickly. Uh, they can, ostrich can lay 100 eggs per year. So a large amount of antibody can be obtained from an only one ostrich. Since uh, they, are, they have a long life, it can lay eggs for 55 years. About four grams of antibody can be produced from one egg. We can provide ostrich antibodies at a low cost of one 4,000 lower compared to mammalian antibodies. Since uh, ostrich antibodies are resistant to heat and acid, they can be applied in many mass consumed products. So this is uh, Facebook and Twitter from Japanese government. Uh, my uh, ostrich research is uh, shown in the SNS. So uh, this is a uh, more detailed result. And ostrich IgY is higher molecular weight. And this is a memory uh, rapid IgG. So about uh, 200 kilodalton. So the FC fraction of ostrich IgY is so long uh, compared to uh, mammalian IgY. So this is a uh, heavy chain, so sorry. So this is the data of the heat resistance of ostrich IgY. So even in the high, higher temperature, uh, ostrich IgY is, is uh, keep their uh, binding activity. But the rapid IgY is uh, decrease their uh, binding activity in the higher temperature. In addition, and the ostrich IgY is resistant at the uh, binding up activity in the acidic condition, pH3. pH3 means uh, a stomach condition. So the ostrich IgY is resistant in the stomach, also in the stomach. So we have created the various kinds of antibody against uh, influenza viruses, uh, including the uh, H5N1 and SARS and MERS and Ebola, Zika and Dengue and, and now uh, COVID-19 viruses. So I'm a specialist in the infectious disease. So uh, infectious 
the examination uh, we performed many, many times. So uh, concerning the Ebola virus, uh, we uh, uh, collaborate with the U US Army. So this is Ebola virus. So an antibody of ostrich against Ebola virus is sa circulating by blood. So in addition, we create a very specific uh, mask uh, impregnated with the ostrich antibody. So ostrich IgY is impregnated with a uh, specific uh, filter, mask filter. Uh, if the anti uh, antigen, uh, including influenza virus, uh, attached to the surface of the filter, ostrich antibody and neutralize the antigen. So uh, this filter is applied to the mask. So this is a, a mask producing a factory. So many, many masks is produced every day. So uh, using this technique, uh, we created uh, um, many kinds of masks uh, in 2009, uh, uh, we created the uh, ostrich antibody mask against influenza virus. Uh, 2015 uh, against uh, MERS-CoV and now uh, COVID-19 virus. So uh, we create the ostrich antibody against COVID-19 virus in uh, zero to zero early time. So we create the uh, antibody. So firstly, we pre produce the antigen of a uh, spike protein uh, from uh, the based on the uh, gene of uh, the spike protein. So create the uh, spike protein from uh, culture cells and uh, purify them. So this is a, uh, a new uh, vaccine. So, so this vaccine is immunized to the ostrich and we create the brand of antibody from ostrich egg. So we injected the spike protein vaccine and the ostrich produce antibody against spike protein. And we purified the IGY from the egg and soaked in the filter. So uh, the antibody against spike protein of COVID-19 is very, very a uh, good one. Uh, they neutralize the infection of COVID-19. So we performed in vitro neutralizing assay and animal testing. So our pure pre, uh, produced ostrich IGY can react to various mutant strains of COVID-19 virus, uh, original type, alpha mutants, and beta strain, and delta, and now an uh, Omicron strain. So this is a uh, immunofluorescence staining in the culture cells. So the culture cells is infected with a uh, mutant strain and, and the virus is uh, replicating in the cells. So if the ostrich antibody can react to the virus, the uh, yellow fluorescence is appeared. So Omicron, strain is reacted with the ostrich antibody. So in addition, the, this antibody uh, neutralizes the Omicron strain. So this is the ostrich uh, antibody mask for COVID-19. In the surface of this filter uh, is impregnated with ostrich antibody against spike protein of COVID-19. So COVID-19 virus is attached to the surface of the filter, uh, the virus is neutralized. 
and lose their infectivity. So we call uh, this mask an uh, ostrich antibody mask. So this is a more detailed of spec of this antibody mask. Uh, we can uh, reduce the infectivity of COVID-19 about 99.6 percentage. So this is the other uh, factors, uh, PFE uh, over uh, 99 percentage, VFE over 99 percentage, BFE and uh, pollen powder collection, uh, 90, over 99 percent. Very good uh, filter we, we could produce. So also we have another technique uh, using ostrich antibody on non-urban mask uh, covering the nose and mouth uh, to uh, apply a simple low cost technology of uh, visualize a new coronavirus on the uh, mask. So uh, we have succeeded in develop a new virus detection method. The filter of the mask visualize the virus. If the virus is in a cough, a saliva, or uh, no, the virus will be trapped in the inner filter of the mask. This is uh, reacted with an ostrich antibody label with fluorescence uh, dyes getting the ostrich IgY against COVID-19. Uh, if the virus is uh, released uh, with or uh, without symptom of the human, so it can be detected on the mask. A mask is the best wearable device. Uh, this is a, a procedure. So we detach the inner mask, uh, inner filter of the mask uh, about the uh, alcohol uh, treatment. So we separate the inner filter from the mask body and uh, react with the uh, uh, fluorescence label ostrich antibody. And dark light is exposed. So if the virus is trapped in the filter, the green fluorescence is appeared. Uh, this is a, a sample of the subject of the uh, infected person. So we did that the inner filter of the mask. The same procedure and uh, dark right under the dark right uh, the 19 is appear on the mask filter. So the light is uh, black light and uh, handy light and uh, the light from the smartphone. That is okay. Very uh, cheap and a very convenient method. So this uh, result is uh, shown from the uh, Reuters and uh, Guardians and very, very uh, international papers. Thank you very much for your kind, uh, kind uh, uh, attention. So like this, we believe that ostrich antibody are a useful weapon in infect infectious disease control. Thank you very much.